Hello class and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. Today we're going to be looking at the requirements for the Create Performance task and I will be giving you an example of a program that might fit the bill. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read through these first few instructions word for word, but I'm not going to go through the entire packet with you. Make sure if you've got this that you read through it yourself so you understand all the instructions. Okay, here we go. Programming is a collaborative and creative process that brings ideas to life through the development of software. In the Create Performance task, you will design and implement a program that might solve a problem, enable innovation, explore personal interests, or express creativity. Your submission must include the elements listed in the submission requirements below. You are allowed to collaborate with your partners on the development of the program only. The video and the personalized project reference that you submit for the performance task must be completed individually without any collaboration with your partners or anyone else. I think I've been calling this the personalized project review um, in past videos, but reference is what I meant to say. You can develop the code segments used in your personalized project reference with your partners or on your own as you work on this. So this is important, we'll talk about it later. You are allowed and encouraged to work with other folks to make your code, but that's it. The rest of the project you have to do on your own. Please note that once your teacher has assigned this performance task as one of your AP score components, you are expected to complete the task without assistance from anyone except for your partners, and then only when creating the program code. You must follow the guidelines for completing the Create Performance Task section below. So, your teacher is going to give you a minimum of nine hours in class to complete and submit the following three things, okay? First, your final program code, which you can create by yourself or you can create with someone else, a video that displays the running of your program and demonstrates functionality, which you have to make by yourself, and then code segments for your personalized project reference, which are created by yourself. So we're going to do all three of these things together right now. So let's start with the program code, okay? I'm not gonna read through all of this word for word, but you are going to be submitting a PDF file that contains all of the program code, including your comments, okay? In your program, you must include student developed, which just means you made it yourself, program code that contains the following. Instructions for input, use of at least one list or some other collection type, at least one procedure, I'm using the word function instead of procedure, but a function is a type of procedure. An algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration that is in the body of the selected procedure. So basically, you need to have some sort of loop and some sort of conditional. You need to call your procedure at some point, and then there needs to be some sort of output based on the program functionality. Okay? So... Once again, strong recommend that you read through this word for word, but for now, I'm going to show you the project that I created as a demonstration. So here's my example project, and I am going to implore you to not just copy this idea, because even though it probably does meet all of the requirements, you will not be taken seriously if you use this program. So what I'm doing is called BogoSort, which is one of the worst sorting algorithms that you can get. It's kind of used as a joke um, in computer science. The idea is that the user is going to use this button and this text input to create a list of numbers that may or may not be in order. And then when they hit the sort list with BOGO button, it will check to see if the numbers are in order. And if it isn't, it will shuffle those numbers like a deck of cards and then check again to see if it's in order. And it will continue to shuffle over and over and over again until the sequence is randomly put in order. And I also do a little thing where I keep track of how many times it had to shuffle before it randomly put the numbers in the right order. As you can probably guess, this is an extremely inefficient algorithm, and in fact, I had to put a warning down here because if you have a list of more than six or seven numbers, it might take a very long time to complete. Now, before I do anything like making a PDF or a video or anything like that, I need to check and make sure my code meets all the requirements, so let's do that now. Does it have instructions for input? Well, 
right here. The user creates a list by adding a number to the text box and hitting add number. So this is how the list is created. That box is ticked. The use of at least one list to represent a collection of data. Once again, right there, there's my list and I use it down here a little bit. At least one procedure that contributes to the program's intending or intended purpose, where you have defined the procedure's name, the return type if necessary, and one or more parameters. So I actually have three procedures, three functions in this program. The first one is a function to check to see, is the list already sorted? Its parameter is a list of numbers that I have entitled list. It has iteration and selection because it uses a for loop and an if then statement to determine whether or not the list is already sorted in ascending order. If it isn't, if any part of the list is greater than the next item in that list, then it returns the string false. And if the list is sorted from lowest to highest, it returns the value true. This procedure by itself pretty much hits all of the boxes that I need. I need the name of the procedure. I need the return type. I need one or more parameters. This procedure covers all of that. I don't even need to look at the rest. I will, but this already handles everything I need. My second procedure shuffles the list randomly. It takes a list and essentially uses a random number generator, which comes from code.org. This is not a procedure I defined myself. It's a procedure that came from code.org, where essentially it takes every item in the list and randomly switches it with another item on the list so that the whole list ends up randomized by the end, and then it returns that list. Now, this function does not hit all of the requirements. It does have a loop, it does have iteration, but what it doesn't have is any sort of conditional, any sort of if-then sequence. All it's doing is taking the list and outputting the same list, but in a random order. Finally, I have my BOGO sort algorithm, which keeps track of the number of loops and then uses a while loop as long as the is sorted function spits out false, it's going to shuffle the list. And as soon as the is sorted function spits out true, it'll return the list and it will tell us the number of times it's shuffled. Even though this one doesn't have an if statement specifically, I would say that this function does meet all of the requirements because this while loop is both iteration and selection. It is checking a conditional, checking to see if the output of the is sorted function is false. And as long as it stays false, it continues the loop. Now the program also needs to call your student developed procedure. And that's not a problem with me. Every single of the functions that I make is called at some point. Uh, for example, here is where the BOGO sort is called and here is where is sorted is called, here is where shuffle list is, is uh, called. So it does call every single one of these procedures. That box is checked. And then instructions for output based on input and program functionality. That output is the sorted list as well as the number of loops. Also the unsorted list, all of those count as output. So I do believe that my program fits all of these boxes. So now that I know my code is up to snuff, I need to make a PDF with all of the code in one place. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on show text. I'm gonna click anywhere in my program and I'm gonna hold control and hit A to select all. And I'm gonna copy. Then I'm gonna go into Google Docs and I'm gonna hit control V to paste all of it. Now the Instructions say that the font needs to be at least 10 point. As you can see, I'm currently sitting at 11 point, but I'm gonna control A again, and I'm gonna make it 12 point. Make it a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. And then when I'm ready, I go up to file, I go to download, I go to PDF. I have now downloaded untitled document because I didn't give it a name, 
and uh, I have that PDF, which I will upload to College Board. Now that we've got our code squared away, now it's time to make our video. You have to submit one video file that demonstrates the running of your program as described below. You are not allowed to collaborate for this particular segment. So, the video has to demonstrate the input to the program, at least one aspect of the functionality of your program, so what does the program do, and some sort of output. Your video may not contain any distinguishing information about yourself. No names, no voice, no face, nothing. You cannot in any way identify yourself in this video. Um, you are, however, allowed to use text captions if you need to. If you want to give some explanation as to what's going on, you can put up text captions kind of like on TikTok. Your video must be in one of these formats. It must be no more than one minute in length, and it needs to be no more than 30 megabytes in file size. This is important. If you don't meet these requirements, they won't just take a few points away, they will just give you a zero. So you need to be absolutely certain that all of these um, requirements are met. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick one minute video myself showing what it is you're supposed to be doing. Now, I am gonna be cropping this so that you only see the program because I do have my name, my screen name, up here in code.org. That would count as distinguishing information, so that must not be included. So, here's my one minute video of my program running. So that's my video. Let's see if it hit all of the requirements. It showed an input to my program. It showed me creating the list using the text input and the button, just like in my previous video on lists. It shows the program sorting that list into ascending order, and it shows the output both in terms of the unsorted list and the sorted list at the end, as well as the output of how many shuffles it took. So yes, I would say that my video meets all of these requirements. Okay, so we've got our video done, we've got our code PDF done, the only thing left is the personalized project reference. To assist in responding to the written response prompts on exam day, submit required portions of your code by capturing and pasting program code segments you developed during the administration of this task. Screen capture should not be blurry, and text should be at least 10 point font size. Your code segments, very important, should not include any comments. They will give you a zero if you put comments on this particular portion of your project, so don't do it. These code segments will be made available to you on exam day only if this component is submitted as final in the AP Digital Portfolio by the deadline. So. Capture and paste two program code segments you developed during the administration of the task that contain a student-developed procedure that implements an algorithm used in your program and a call to that procedure. That's just a really fancy way of saying I need my function definition and I need the place where the function is being called. The first program code segment must be a student-developed procedure that defines the procedure's name and return type, contains and uses one or more parameters, and implements an algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. For this part, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my procedure that checks to see whether or not the list is sorted. Yeah, that's this one right here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. The function is sorted. Here's its name. Here's its parameter. Here is its iteration. Here is the conditional, here is the return. So this chunk of code ticks all of the boxes, so I am going to either just copy paste the text or I'm going to use the snipping tool, 
Now, if I were to select this and submit this, I just got a zero because I did the thing that I very specifically said not to do, which was I included comments. You do not want to include comments for this portion. So I'm gonna do that again, but I'm gonna make sure that I only take the function definition and not the comments. I will save this as an image. And that's the first part of my reference. The second program code segment must show where your procedure is being called in your program. So where is the is sorted um, algorithm being used? Well, it is down here in the BOGO sort function. It says while is sorted is false. That is where the procedure is called in my program. So once again, I am going to use my snipping tool. I'm only gonna grab the function itself, not the comments. And I'll save that. I'm gonna change the names later on, but for now, I'll just save it under the default name. And we now have the first two parts of our personalized project reference. You'll notice that unlike in previous years, you don't actually have to answer any questions about these yet. On exam day, which for my class is May 15th, 2024, on exam day, you're gonna get this code back and then you're gonna answer questions about it as part of taking the AP exam. Finally, I need to capture and paste two program code segments I developed during the administration of the task that contain a list being used to manage complexity in your program. This idea of manage complexity is really important and it's almost certainly going to be a question that will be asked on exam day. When they say it manages complexity, what they mean is it makes the program simpler, easier, or more efficient than it would if you didn't use a list. So for example, I don't think I could run this at all if I didn't have a list. I would need like separate variables for every single element on the list. It would be a nightmare. So the first program code segment must show how data have been stored in the list. So way up at the top, this on event here, this is where um, the user creates the list by adding a number to the text box and hitting add number, right? So I am actually going to, for now, delete these comments because I want it to see the, the lists here as well, right? As well as the on event on how the list gets populated. So I'm gonna grab that. This is my list definition. So I'll save it as list definition. And then I'm just gonna undo what I did because I wanna make sure that this stays, stays put. The last code segment must show the data in the list being used, such as creating new data from the existing data or accessing multiple elements. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the shuffle function, which uses the list, traverses it, and makes it random. This isn't the only place a list is being used. I could go somewhere else, but I think this is gonna be the best place for me. So I'm gonna grab, without the uh, comments, just the function where my list is being used. I'll save it as list use. And I now have all of the requirements done, yeah? I created my program, which again is a very bad program that you should not use, but it does hit all of the requirements. I made sure to double check that. I made my video and I captured my code segments for my personal project reference. I hope this was informative. If you need any further help or if you have any further questions, please put them in the comments. I will do my best to help out, but bear in mind that I can't actually help you with your code because that kind of defeats the entire purpose of this project. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time.